Hello, my name is Lynn Griffith. I'm a tropical plant and soil expert. I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about plant physiology for growers, understanding plants. A lot of people who are professional growers maybe have never taken plant physiology before, or maybe if they have, they've taken it a long time ago and they don't really remember. So I'm going to talk about some of the basics of how plants function and how plants operate. First of all, as humans, if we're hungry, we can go get a sandwich. If we're thirsty, we can get a glass of water. If we're cold, we can put on a sweater. If we're hot, we can remove something or turn the AC down or whatever. But if you're a plant, you just have to sit there and put up with whatever conditions the environment has doled out for you that day. Now, plants don't have brains. They cannot think. They don't have anything to think with. So the way they operate is through what are called biochemical pathways within the plant. Now, at any given moment, plants know where the sun is, they know what the temperature is, they know how much moisture they have in their soil, and they know what the humidity is. They don't know that conceptually like humans know it, but they know it from what they sense through their biochemical pathways. Now, plants may look fairly simple, but they're really very complicated things. The genome of the average higher plant is actually about 100 times more complex than the average fish or the average mammal or the average bird. The genome being the, the sum total of the genetic material that makes up a plant. Plants do some interesting things. They start with the root system, obviously, and moisture. You can live without food for a while. You can't live without moisture or oxygen for very long. And plants are the same way. So one of the most important things in a plant's life is hydration. It's kind of like job one every morning is to know where the water is and to be able to absorb enough water to keep themselves hydrated. I'll explain more about that in a second. Basically, roots sense moisture gradients within soil. They know when the soil is becoming wetter and they know when the soil is becoming drier. Again, not with a brain, but with biochemical pathways. So what plants will do is when a root is growing through the soil, if they sense it's more moist over here, the root cells on that side will actually grow more slowly, causing the root to bend and curve toward where the moisture is. And again, they sense this chemically through their biochemical pathways. You were probably taught that plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. Well, that's only half true. That is what plants do in the daytime. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. But at nighttime, it's a completely different story. At night, plants close up shop and they put together everything that they've made during the day via photosynthesis. It was Francis Darwin, I believe, in 1898 that observed that when you put a plant by a window, the leaves closest to the window have open stomates when you look at them through magnification. Stomates are the little pores in the leaf that open and close, and they regulate moisture and gas exchange. Darwin also realized that while the stomates are open here where the window is, the stomates are closed on the dark side. So the plant knows where the sun is and it opens the stomates accordingly. How do the plants know that? The plants sense light in their chlorophyll and by other means through photosynthesis. Now in a typical morning situation like we have here in beautiful Orlando, Florida, basically the plant will sense when the sun comes up and it will open the stomates. The idea behind the opening and closing of stomates, think of the stomates as little windows in the plant because when you look at them under magnification that's really what they look like is little windows. When the plant opens the windows or the stomates in the morning, that allows two things to happen. Number one, it allows moisture to go from the roots through the stem and out the leaves. The second thing that the opening of the stomates does is it allows carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through the stomate into the leaf. Now, the average plant on a dry weight basis is about 40% carbon. That's a lot, 40%. And almost all of that carbon comes from carbon dioxide absorption from the atmosphere. A little bit of it comes from absorption of amino acids by the root system, but most of it just comes through here. Now, biology is chemistry when you boil it all down, and chemistry is physics. The water molecule, if you're able to look at a di uh, diagram of it, the water molecule is a little bit bent. It's a little bit curved like that, and it looks sort of kidney-shaped. Water is a highly polar substance meaning it has electrical charges within it. You may have seen that little experiment they show sometimes where you take a balloon and you like rub it on a sweater and then you put it under a stream of water and it pulls the stream of water toward the balloon. Water is a charged material. 
Because of that, <clears throat> water molecules like to stick together. You notice that water likes to form drops and droplets. That's because of the, the weak electrical charges within the water molecules. They sort of adhere or stick to each other. Now that's important for the following reason. When I'm a plant and the sun comes up and I open my stomates and I start pumping water, what happens is that those water molecules are sort of sticking to each other as they go up through the roots and into the stem and ultimately out through the leaves. Now about 99% of the water that a plant takes in goes out through what we call transpiration. It goes from the roots to the stem and then out through the leaves. A lot of people believe that if you drought stress a plant, it causes them to grow more roots. That's totally false, and I'll explain why. For a number of years, like, like 10 years, I wondered, why don't plants grow extra roots? If I were a plant, wouldn't it be a competitive advantage for me to grow extra roots in case of drought, in case of root disease or nematodes or physical disruption or who knows what else could happen? And I wondered for years, why don't plants grow extra roots? Well, I read an 800-page book written by three Egyptian guys called Plant Roots, The Hidden Half. And in there, I found the answer. The limiting factor to root growth in plants, and ultimately to all plant growth, is carbon. Plants have to budget the carbon they take in through their leaves via carbon dioxide. They have to budget that carbon between roots and shoots and flowers and leaves and stems and seed pods and fruits and everything else that they make. When everything is perfect in a plant's life, when the light is perfect and the moisture is perfect, and the temperature is perfect, and the humidity is perfect, the limiting factor in plant growth is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That is why when you're growing plants under low light, say in a shade house, or if you have a golf course green that's heavily shaded, once you lose your root system, it's very hard to gain the root system back. Because under low light condition, the plant is not able to photosynthesize as much. It's not able to take in enough carbon to make the roots that it needs to make back, and so it's a much slower process. <music>